Hello and welcome to Gospel Kingdom TV. I hope you're doing well this day, this beautiful Sunday. I happen to like rainy days and a little while ago it was raining. Wherever you are, whether it's at home, whether you're visiting someone, whether you're in your car watching Facebook or somewhere else, we want to congratulate you for fighting the good fight of faith, for tuning in every every Thursday, every Friday, and every time we have a Gospel Kingdom TV uh, program, word, or message. Please check us out on Gospel Kingdom TV. Check out Pastor David, Pastor Lorena, and all the other hosts of pastors, ministers, men and women of God that form part of the Gospel Kingdom TV network. Well, Yesterday, my wife and I, we were, we were walking our, our, our dogs. We have three dogs. I mean, where we got three little dogs. And we were walking them around the safe community. And um, both my wife and I began to hear uh, a word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord that came to me was very, very strong. To the point where I was literally frozen in my step. I just came in a complete halt, and my wife looked at me. And she was, what's the matter? What's wrong? I go, the Lord is speaking to me, and he's speaking to me very mightily. The word he gave me was stand. S-T-A-N-D. Stand. So before I get into the message, I want to pray over everyone watching, everyone tuning in, because I believe that this is the word for you. It is a word for the body of Christ. It is a word for every servant of God, man, woman, and child, every believer in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach. Father, we come before you, and we thank you for every listener, for everyone tuning in. We pray, mighty God, that the blood of Christ, Father God, will shield and protect their households. Father, in the name of Jesus, open up ears and eyes that they may hear and understand your word. Let it be a rebel word. Let it be a solid word. Let it be a productive word. Let it be a miracle making word into their lives today. For I ask you this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I want to call your attention, um, beloved, to the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to be focusing specifically on Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, admonishes us to stand. Stand. To make a stand. Because our battle is not against flesh and blood, but powers in principalities. Verse 12 says, Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities, against, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand, there is the word, to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand, stand therefore, stand therefore. You know, it's very interesting, this word stand. In Spanish, it, it means firmes. And firmes is actually a military word when a soldier stands at attention. Firmes, at attention. And that is a translation of the word stand verbatim in Spanish. Paul in writing the Ephesians, could have used another word. He could have used maybe the word sit or kneel. Or he could have used a term like prostrate before the Lord or, 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 or go down on your knees, prostrate. Something to that effect. But instead, uh, because Paul was being directed by the Holy Spirit, how many of you say amen? Paul was directed by the Holy Spirit in everything that he said and everything that he wrote and everything that he did, for that matter. So 
Paul, being directed by the Holy Spirit, used the word stand. Without a doubt, Paul, being a Roman citizen, had witnessed a wrestling match or two. Without a doubt, Paul had witnessed uh, gladiators going uh, head on, one on one. Without a doubt, Paul had witnessed many of the Roman uh, physical sports like wrestling and, 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 uh, and, and sword fights and whatnot. You see, Paul used the word stand because we cannot face the enemy sitting down. That's a good place for you to say hallelujah. We cannot wrestle. We cannot engage our opponent sitting down, kneeling down, or with our face on the ground. Unless you want to get your face kicked in. How many of you can say amen? Paul used the word stand with every strategic purpose that was behind the writing of chapter 6. We cannot face the enemy any other way but standing. And stand we must. You know, when, when two Roman wrestlers were getting ready to engage in a wrestling match, they started the match by facing each other. The gladiators when, they were, when it was a one-on-one -on -one match, also began their match by facing each other while dressed in the armor that would give them, now listen to this, that would give them maximum protection while offering them maximum mobility. And this is what Paul is trying to convey in chapter 6 of the book of Ephesians. You see, the word stand can mean more than just rising to your feet. You notice today, I am standing. I told my wife, I cannot do this message sitting down. Because I must stand. I'm taking a stand right now. And I hope you and your spirit and your home, you are taking a stand as well. Amen? Amen. So, the word stand can be more than just rising to your feet. For example, one can take a stand against something we agree with or disagree with. For example, you can take a stand on some kind of issue or opinion. As such, the word stand can mean to take and or assume a position or an attitude. I don't know how many of you are listening to this. The word stand can assume can, can mean assuming a position or taking an attitude about a topic, a subject, an opinion, something that you do not agree with. In fact, the word stand may also convey a determined effort for or against something or someone, especially when it's used in the context of a final defensive effort. In other words, I took a stand against violence in our school districts. I took a stand against violence in our community. The word stand often has a military application, as in to withstand or to stand an assault of the enemy. To stand or hold your ground. You might remember reading or hearing about it in school, Custer's Last Stand. U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel George Custer. Perhaps you are familiar with the story and maybe you not. But just in case you are not or you might have forgotten, the story reads something like this. Under the skies, darkened by smoke and gunfire and flying arrows, 210 men of the U.S. Cavalry Unit led by Colonel George Custer, confronted thousands of Sioux and Cheyenne warriors 
on June 25, 1876, near the Little Bighorn River, present-day Montana. In less than one hour, the Indians had won the battle at Little Bighorn, massacring Custer and every one of his men. This battle has been known as Custer's Last Stand. You see, Colonel Custer knew that there were thousands of enemies surrounding them. But being the courageous man that he was, Custer decided to take a stand instead of fleeing like a yellowback coward. Custer took a stand. When the great revolt of the Jews against uh, Rome, against the Roman uh, conquest, uh, broke out in in 66 A.D., a group of 960 uh, Jews fled to Masada, including women and children. That's 960 Jews, including women and children. When Jerusalem was in ruins, the Romans then turned their attention to Masada. Masada, the last Jewish community of the day. Led by Flavius Silva, a legionnaire, 8,000 Romans built a siege wall and a ramp on the western side of, mountain, of the mountain of Masada. After several months, of the siege without success, mind you, on April 15, 73 AD, the Romans finally got to the top of Masada and broke through the defenses, only to discover that all but two women and three children had taken their own lives as opposed and rather to live as slaves in the Roman Empire. Hallelujah. The Jews of Masada took a stand. It cost their lives, but they took a stand. Armed with clay, uh, clay pitchers, torches inside of them, and trumpets in their right hand, Gideon led an army of 300 brave Israelites against a vast Midianite army. The Bible says that they were as numerous as the sand of the sea. In fact, if you have your Bible, it says uh, chapter 7 of the book of Judges, uh, verse 12. Now the Midianites, says Judges 7, verse 12. Now the Midianites and the Amalekites, where have you heard that name before? Amalekites, whole different subject, and we talked about it at length at one point. And the Amalekites and all the people of the east were lying in the valley as numerous as locusts, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seashore. But suddenly, don't you just love suddenlies? Suddenly, upon Gideon's order, the 300 brave Israelites blew their trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hands and cried out in a great voice, The sword of the Lord and Gideon. And the Bible says, my friends, the Lord turned everyone's sword in the Midianite camp against each other. Listen, I don't know if you're getting this. The Midianites butchered themselves to death. Gideon and his 300 brave Israelites took a stand. Then we have Eleazar, the mighty warrior. Many folks have never heard of Eleazar. Many folks that read the Bible have not really heard or paid attention to Eleazar. Why? Because he's only mentioned in one or two verses in 2 uh, Samuel chapter 23, specifically verse 10, which reads, But Eleazar stood his ground 
and struck down the Philistines till his hand grew tired and the sword froze in his hand. The Lord brought a great victory that day. Eleazar took a stand. King David, we all know King David. King David, armed with five soft stones and a slingshot, accepted Goliath's challenge, stood in front of the nine-foot behemoth of a man and struck him down with one single rock to his forehead. King David took a stand. Blind and shackled Samson, led by a boy by the hand, stood between the pillars which supported the Philistine pagan temple and called out to the Lord saying, O oh Lord, remember me, I pray. Give me strength just this one time. O oh God, that I might with one single blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. The Philistines had gouged his eyes out. And Samson, the judge, the defender, had become blind and had lost all his strength. But Samson cried out, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might. And the temple fell on the Philistines and all the people that were in it. So then, the dead that Samson killed at his death were more than he ever killed in his life. Samson took a stand. He took a stand and he killed more Philistines in his death than he did when he was alive. Hallelujah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when threatened by King Nebuchadnezzar to be thrown into the blazing furnace if they didn't bow down and worship the giant golden image King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, they responded, O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your hand, Majesty. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your Majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you set up. My God, my God, my God. If ever three people took a stand, it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They took a stand for the God they believed in, and God spared his life, even though they were in fact thrown into the blazing furnace. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved their lives not unto death. You see, my friends, you see, beloved, taking a stand is a serious thing. This is why Ephesians 6.12 instructs us and admonishes us, put on the whole armor of God. In fact, why don't we read that? Ephesians 6, turn to your Bible, Ephesians 6, and we're going to begin with chapter 11, 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 
that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shot with the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray always, with all prayer and supplication, in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Today, my friend, I'm asking you one thing. Take a stand. Stand with us today. Take a stand against the 2020 angel of death known as coronavirus. Take a stand against fear. Take a stand against unbelief. Take a stand against doubt. Take a stand against apathy. And take a stand against the enemy. Take a stand against every spirit and voice that will whisper in your ear, This is it. You're going to die. Take a stand against every power, against every principality, and against every ruler in the high places. Put on the whole armor of God and take a stand. Take a stand. God is with you, even as he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Take a stand today and watch the Lord work a mighty miracle in your life, in the life of your children, your grandchildren, and your loved ones, in your ministry, in your church, in your business, and in your job. When you go out and when you come in, wherever you go, God will be with you. Take a stand. I don't know who I'm talking to you to today, but I know that I'm talking to someone. You have been beaten by fear, fear of the unknown. Coronavirus is all around us. People are dying left and right. Thousands of people are dying. Scientists report that perhaps a million or two million people will die as a result of coronavirus. But we serve a God, the same God that was there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The same God that gave Samson the final strength that he needed to bring down the, the, the pagan Philistine temple. The same God that was behind David when he slew Goliath the giant. The same God that was with Gideon and his 300 brave Israelites. The same God then is the same God now. He was with them and He's with you now. And I decree and I declare that you will take a stand. You will take a stand today. Options are, don't take a stand and let the enemy rule your life. Don't take a stand and surrender whatever goods, whatever property, whatever benefit, whatever health, whatever you have. Surrender it. Because if you don't take a stand, the enemy will attack regardless. So you might as well take a stand. Take a stand for the Lord and let Him fight your battles. Perhaps you don't know Christ today. Perhaps you're listening to me, you think I'm some kind of crazy man. I am. The Word of God says that we are going to become very crazy in the last days, but crazy for Jesus. Because we know that His coming is right around the corner. Everything that is happening, my friend, is prophetic. So we rest in Him because God's promises are yes and amen. We never like to leave the air. We never like to conclude our message without an invitation to those who don't know Christ. And perhaps you need to renew your vows with the Lord. You need to come back. Come back. The Word of God says, For all have sinned and have fallen short to the glory of God. We have all missed the mark. 
But the Bible also says, Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. So in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, pray this prayer with me. Wherever you are, stop what you're doing. If you need to go to a room in your house, go to a room. Lock yourself in the bathroom. Run to your car, whatever it is you have to do. Find some privacy and repeat after me. Almighty God, I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he came to this world. He walked among us. He suffered. He died, was crucified, buried, and on the third day rose again. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Come into my life. Live in me, Lord Jesus. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And lead me to a ministry, a spirit-filled ministry that preaches the word of God. For in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. You've been watching Gospel Kingdom TV. My name is Pastor Michael Gonzalez. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you very soon. God bless.